Afternoon, everybody. My name is Corporal Shepard. Today, I'm going to be giving a brief on professional and military bearing. Uh, before I start with the brief, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick risk assessment. Um, so we are in a classroom environment today, but there are always some things we need to be cognizant of. For example, uh, weather conditions, right? Uh, we are in Kansas, so the surrounding areas, uh, so tornadoes are always going to be a risk. Um, if, there's, if there is a tornado in your area, what you're going to do is you're going to find the nearest room with no windows in it, be that a bathroom or a closet or, or a laundry room, something of the sort, right? Um, other than that, keep an eye on the sky. Uh, make sure, you know, if there's inclement weather in your area, make sure you're aware of it. Um, fire hazards. If there is a fire in your building or in your area, what you're going to do is you're going to find the nearest, safest escape route. So just because it's near you doesn't mean it's always safe, right? You want to go up and check the door. Make sure it's not hot. Make sure the handle's not hot. Because if it's hot, that could, that, it, that could imply that there's a fire on the other side of the door. Um, so again, safest and quickest route. Um, since we're in a, a classroom environment, make sure that the bags, cores, everything around you is tucked away so you're not tripping and falling over it during, the, during this period of instruction, during this brief. Um, active shooter. If there's an active shooter in your area, right, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to run, hide, and fight. What I mean by that is you're going to run, you're going to get away from, the, away from the intruder, away from the shooter, you're going to hide, you're going to find a safe location and barricade yourself in, and you're going to fight. If your position is compromised, you're going to set up a hasty ambush and fight back as much as possible because, as it says in the Soldier's Creed, we'll never accept defeat, we'll never quit, right? because we're soldiers. All right, this concludes my safety brief. We're gonna go ahead and uh, start with the presentation. Um, as I stated in the beginning, my name is Corporal Shepard. I'm going over professional and military bearing. Uh, the overall classification for this presentation is unclassified, so you can record it, share it if you want to, it doesn't matter. Today's agenda. Um, we're gonna start with references. We're gonna move down to what military bearing is, um, appearance and how it applies to professional military bearing, customs and courtesies and how it applies to professional military bearing, individual responsibilities, uh, leader responsibilities. We're going to summarize everything at the end, and then after that, I'll take questions that you guys may have. Okay, here are my references. Um, I got ADP 6-22. Uh, that covers Army leadership. We got TC 7-21.13. That's the soldier's guide. And then AR 670-1. Y'all should be familiar with that one. It's, it's wear an appearance of the uniform. What is military bearing? Okay, so the Army's definition of military bearing is as follows. Uh, military bearing is conducting oneself in a professional manner to bring credit upon oneself and the Army at all times. It is the ability to project a commanding presence and confidence, uphold standards, and doing the hard right over the easy wrong in both good and bad situations, both on and off duty. Appearance. Professionalism is everything, and it starts with how you present yourself. Poor appearance is unprofessional. That's pretty self-explanatory. If you're walking around in uniform, you got your you got your boots unbloused, you got your laces untucked, you know, you got your name tapes about to fall off your uniform. That is unprofessional. That's gonna paint an unprofessional image upon yourself and your unit as a whole. You want to avoid that. Take care of yourself in your uniform. Um, AR 670-1. Um, Y'all know what AR 670-1 is, or you should. Um, it covers the details on your uniform and how you should wear it, along with DA PAM 670-1. Uh, for example, it covers haircuts, right? If you're a male. You gotta maintain a conservative, professional haircut that's short, doesn't, inter doesn't interfere with the wear of the uh, headgear. Um, you gotta maintain a clean shaven face, um, unless you have a shaving profile, of course. And for females, you cannot wear lipstick or nail polish that, is, that contradicts the uniform or that is of extreme color, right? Those are just some examples, but a lot of that stuff is covered in AR 670-1 and DAPM 670-1. Uh, physical fitness. Uh, physical fitness correlates with appearance uh, because if you're walking around, busting out of your uniform, right? You look unfit, you look lazy. Um, that also affects foreign relations, right? If you're overseas working with allied forces, um, foreign forces, and uh, all of our soldiers are walking around out of shape, busting out of uniform, like I said a second ago, that's going to paint an unprofessional image upon the entirety of the Army as a whole. They're going to start thinking the U.S. Army is lazy, the U.S. Army is unfit, the U.S. Army is unprofessional. That's not what we want. We want to avoid that. <clears throat> all right, customs and courtesies. Customs and courtesies are an important factor in military bearing. Uh, customs and courtesies must be rendered both on post and off post while in uniform, right? So um, customs and courtesies don't stop once you leave the gate. If you're still in uniform and you come across an officer, for example, that's in uniform, you render your proper hand salute if you're outdoors. You, you know, you give them the greeting that they address them as sir, ma'am, whatever, and you continue, right? That's that's the standard. You have to abide by the rules and regulations of the uniform while you are wearing it. Um, customs and courtesies maintains professionalism within the army and reduces insubordination. Um, what's important about that is. You know, we are an organization, we have a hierarchy, we have a rank system, a rank structure. Um, if you keep respect within that rank structure, that's what separates us from an unorganized group 
uh, for example, like the one we're fighting overseas right now. Uh, we need to maintain as organized and as professional as possible. That's what makes the Army run fluently, right? Individual responsibilities. Soldiers have an individual responsibility to remain professional at all times. <clears throat> individual representation of the Army. What that means is basically, no matter if you're in uniform, out of uniform, on post, off post, if you're a soldier, you're a representation of the Army to everyone who knows you're a soldier, right? If you mess up, someone takes a picture, takes a video of you doing something stupid you shouldn't be doing, all it takes is that one video to be posted online with the caption of, this is a soldier or something like that. They're, people aren't going to think, oh, this individual messed up. They're going to think, this soldier messed up. The Army's messing up, right? So everything you do can be brought back on the Army. You need to avoid that. Do the right thing at all times. Online action. Um, this kind of goes with that, right? Um, do the right thing. Uh, act respectful, responsible um, as a soldier, no matter where you are, including online, right? Your social media sites. Um, you don't want to portray a bad image on social media sites as a soldier, right? Um, same thing with groups and clubs. You cannot be affiliated with extremist or offensive groups while you're a soldier. It's not, it's not, the, uh, it's not the responsible thing to do, and it's not what professionals do. Um, Sharpen EO. As a professional organization, Sharpen EO should be inexistent. If we were all acting as professionals with military bearing at all times, Sharpen EO would not be stressed as much as it is today. It's, it's continuously brought up because it's continuously a problem, right? As professionals, it's our job to stop it where it lies, prevent it, squash it where it stands, right? Um, and certainly not conduct it ourselves, right? We gotta squash sharp and EO. Leader responsibilities. The standard for professionalism and bearing is set by the NCO. Uh, I think this is important because just look at the first line of the NCO creed, right? No one is more professional than I. Um, NCOs are meant to be the standard, right? The soldiers follow exactly what the leader does. The leaders have to maintain that professionalism at all times because if, if the leader slips and the leader's not professional, who's, who's making the subordinates be professional? What's making them stay professional, right? You gotta lead by example. Um, train and instill professionalism. Um, you gotta start as soon as the soldier gets there, right? A, so a soldier gets to unit straight from basic training, they might still have some of those civilian ticks in them, right? You gotta, you gotta, knock, you gotta squash that unprofessionalism where it lies, like, right in the beginning. That's what, that, that's what I mean by that. Um, Maintain bearing in stressful situations. If you're a leader, no matter if it's in garrison, downrange, if you find yourself in a, a stressful situation, like if you're being shot at downrange, for example, and you start flipping out, you lose your bearing entirely, your soldiers are gonna follow right, right behind you. You need to maintain your cool, maintain your bearing at all times, even in stressful situations. Because if, you're, if you maintain your confidence, your soldiers are gonna stay confident. You're gonna maintain operation fluently, just like that. Okay, uh, spree de corps. Um, spree de corps is important, right? Uh, because if you, if you do not, uh, give your soldiers a spree de corps. If you do not give them a purpose, direction, and motivation, they're not going to want to stay professional. They're not going to want to keep their military bearing. They're just want to. They're just going to focus on getting through the day and getting out of the military. You want to give them that purpose, direction, and motivation, right? Spree de corps is important. All right. In summary, we went over what professional military bearing is. I gave you guys the definition. Uh, we went over appearance and how it relates to the professional military bearing. We went over ARC seventy one, right? We went over how uh, your physical fitness affects your appearance customs and courtesies and how they relate to professional and military bearing we went over how how important customs and courtesies is and when and when not to perform customs and courtesies um, individual responsibilities we went over things like sharp and eel that you need to squash it where it lies we went over um, conducting yourself online within groups respectfully as a as a uh, professional um, leader responsibilities we went over what you're supposed to do as an nco you're supposed to maintain your bearing your professionalism at all times you're supposed to you're supposed to instill respect, um, responsibility, and discipline within the troops as they come to your team and as they come to your unit. Okay, at this time, I will be taking any questions you guys might have for me. No questions? Okay, cool. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over a quick AAR. Um, so, what was supposed to happen today? Right, a brief on professionalism and military bearing. What happens today? Exactly that, right? Um, what can I do better? What can I improve? Okay, what went well today? What went, what went right? What can I continue doing that you guys like, like to see me do? Okay, sweet. Um, were there any injuries today or any damage to equipment? Okay, uh, were our control measures implemented effectively? Okay, sweet. At this time, I'll do a quick police call. Um, after you guys are finished, I will conclude my brief. Thank you for attending.